thank you very much uh, for having me. Um, uh, it's my pleasure today um, to present some of uh, our research project related to federated learning. Um, so as you can see in the outline, um, we have um, several contains. It's not, it's not only limited to the federated learning of a wireless network uh, like the title, but um, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce to you uh, some other project um, that our research group also have done in the, during the past, uh, past couple of years, including personalized uh, federated learning and on global federated learning as well. All right. So um, first, um, I would like to talk um, uh, and, and, and to, to introduce uh, about federated learning, um, the motivation and the benefit of uh, federated learning. So, um, because I believe that the audience have a diverse background, so to make sure that we are in the same page, um, I would like to start from the beginning, um, I mean, from the basics um, definition for the machine learning. Um, so, it's, 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 it, according to the standard definition, so machine learning is a process of teaching a computer system how to make accurate prediction with the data. So, as you can see, there's some uh, um, keywords like prediction and the data for the computer system, right? And some example of uh, prediction is such as, um, suppose you have a piece of fruit in, in, in the photo, um, then how the computer can predict um, whether that object um, in the photo is a banana or an apple, right? Or suppose um, uh, uh, you are driving your Tesla on the street and you know that with the new software update, um, the um, the Tesla uh, with his uh, camera and his uh, computer vision uh, algorithm um, can uh, first is, can identify the people uh, cross the road in front of the car, uh, which helps us make uh, the next decision. Let's, let's say stop the car um, uh, to 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 um, guarantee the safety for the passenger. Okay, or another example of machine learning, right? Uh, recognize, recognizing the speech accurately enough to generate the caption for the same YouTube video. Okay, so um, in traditional centralized machine learning, um, uh, you can see here all the data, computation, and communication are on the same machine. Right. So uh, even though um, the term centralized are used in this context is um, a little bit non-standard, but here, centralized, what I mean centralized is that suppose you have a single machine, let's say your laptop here, then um, you download um, um, and a piece of data, and then you run your, let's say, um, machine learning uh, uh, framework like PyTorch or TensorFlow to train the model on the downloaded data, and then you're going to use uh, your models to test on some um, uh, uh, data, data uh, test data. Um, then all of these activities are on the same machine. So that's why I call it a centralized machine, uh, centralized machine learning. Um, this is very convenient, um, but um, you know, due to the limitation of the technologies, so whatever you use, use um, uh, the state of the art, the super computing, uh, at some point you're gonna hit the wall. Um, at some point you reach the limitation of the the, the capacity of the CPU, the GPU, um, the amount of storage in your laptop or in your server. So uh, this approach is convenient, but uh, the um, big uh, problem is, is it's not scalable. Okay, it's not scalable, and especially uh, nowadays, um, a lot of application uh, 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 we use with, with the advancement of deep learning use a lot of big data, um, especially deep learning with a billion, a million and billions of parameters. So uh, it's almost impractical or impossible to train deep learning uh, with big data on a single machine um, in the central machine learning scheme. Okay? So um, uh, to um, uh, address the problem of uh, the, the scalability problem, 
um, this uh, approach is called distributed machine learning. Uh, due to what happened in the data center or cloud. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, this is the picture of uh, one of the data center where you can see there are a lot of server here. Um, you can see the little object uh, that stuck together on, on a rack here. Uh, we go this part is a rack that can, can contain tens of um, the server and they are connected to each, uh, to each other on the same rack uh, with a very fast communication link. So, so for example, wireline um, or optical link. Okay, and um, uh, uh, um, you see here the the term distributed machine learning uh, uh, in this context is is that the computation going to be distributed to several server. Uh, in this case, we call another name for the server is a worker. So the term, you know, it's a server to do the task of uh, running the machine learning, uh, training the machine learning models workers. So we have a lot of workers. So um, the, the worker gonna uh, use their um, CPU to be used to, 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 to run on their local data. Um, in, in, in this context, um, the thing is um, uh, the data is homogeneous. So what is what does it mean by uh, homogeneous data? Because in data center, um, the first step um, in how to have the data is to collect and process the data uh, in advance. Um, so um, the data is going to be collected and then shuffle and then makes the data is IID and it is going to be distributed back to a bunch of uh, worker. Okay, and then the worker is going to run the machine and they're going to exchange. The, the model, um, the, the learning process with um, a server to call parameter server. Yeah. So that's that's called distributed machine learning. Um, and where computation is distributed, but still the data needs to be collected in, in, in pre processing. Um, okay, so um, until 2016, um, uh, there's a group of uh, researchers from Google. Um, they um, propose an ID um, with the, the algorithm name uh, that average. Okay, and this algorithm is run uh, under context of, um, they call it the, the federated learning context, where um, each of the uh, worker or the client uh, in federated learning can use uh, their um, local computation power to, to train the local data without um, exchanging the data, without logging data back to the data center. And um, the, uh, the model can be, uh, I mean, the, the, the local model can, can be run multiple iteration, multiple rounds, before um, uh, sending back, before it's, it's sent back to the parameter server for the aggregation. And it turns out the global model um, learned in this case, in this federated learning context by using a federated, a fed average algorithm worked very well, um, even though the data distribution of different um, uh, client are uh, non IID. Okay. So, I mean, the, the, the distribution of user one um, may be different from the distribution of user two uh, in terms of the data distribution. So, um, this idea, um, when it comes out, comes out that creates a super um, tension from uh, uh, machine learning community uh, because now um, uh, it, it, it can handle a lot of issues like data privacy, um, uh, offloading the computation to uh, several uh, mobile devices, uh, and uh, importantly, data is no need to be, no need to uh, collecting the data and, and, and pre-processing the data centrally. Um, but, um, well, uh, it's not only the machine learning community, but also uh, the networking community 
uh, or the um, uh, uh, mobile network can interface. It's also very in, in, intrigued with this idea of federated learning uh, due to several reasons. Um, the first reason is that according to the um, prediction of the Cisco, is in uh, 2021, the amount of data that is going to be generated by IoT and mobile device is going to be 40, 40 times the amount of data center traffic um, that that is going to be transferred to the internet. Okay, so this uh, is is like 40 fold. Um, so it means it means it's very. Um, uh, I mean, it's in practice it's very expensive to first transfer the data from edge device back to the data center according to the practice of uh, distributed machine learning. Um, and secondly, uh, it's going to uh, waste a lot of um, network bandwidth when you transfer uh, such a lot of data over the network. It also consumes a lot of um, energy of the device. Okay, so with federated learning, you don't have to transfer the data to the network. You only uh, transfer um, a network, the, the learning model of whose uh, who's side is going to be much smaller than the raw data. Okay, um, uh, and also there are several um, uh, um, factors also advocate for the federated learning over um, mobile edge network or wide edge network. Uh, those are uh, nowadays. Um, the, due to the advance of uh, technology, so um, a lot of um, powerful mobile professor uh, inside the mobile device um, can handle uh, the training, the machine learning training uh, process very well. And um, due to the um, large amount of device, uh, let's say, say for example, one people can have more than one devices, so there's a potential. Uh, a, a large amount of participant, uh, participation of the user equipment or client to the federated learning to guarantee for its um, uh, success of the, the federated learning process. Okay, um, so that's that's the motivation, uh, the history, uh, the benefit of uh, general federated learning. Um, now I would like to talk about. Um, one of the first idea of um, our group uh, relating to federated learning, um, especially so this is, is over the wireless network environment. Um, there are other collaborators in this project as well, but I would like to um, highlight these two students who did uh, the most hardest task in this project. Um, the first one is my uh, first few student in Sydney, and the second one is um, also my student when he when we were in Korea. Okay, so let me talk about um, the system model first. Um, so as you know, um, in, in federated learning, we have a, a, a parameter server, so we can consider a base station of the wireless network as um, a parameter server and each um, user equipment. So well, throughout the talk, I'm going to um, intentionally use different terms like user equipment, um, clients, or user uh, with the same meaning of um, federated learning client. So here, um, suppose we have n user equipment. Each of user equipment has some um, local data set D sub n. Okay, so n is the index um, to the case for the user n. Um, and then um, each uh, user is associated with a uh, local loss function, uh, F, um, uh, so J sub N is the local loss function of user N. Uh, with respect to a uh, learning model weight uh, W, so, um, so the local loss function of one uh, user is just the average of the local loss function uh, on each data point. Um, and of the, the local data set. So it, its local data point is represented by um, a pair of x, y, where x is usually um, is used to denote the feature vector of um, the sample data, and yr is used to denote the label of um, the, the, 
questionable data. So it means we consider uh, supplies and context. So some of the, um, the last functions are gonna, are gonna be used in suffice and context like linear regression or support with the machine um, uh, according to uh, uh, provided here. But uh, we can also use, um, uh, we can also employ some deep learning model as well uh, for the local loss function here, okay? And then um, the purpose of federated learning is to learn uh, a, a global model W uh, for a global loss function, which is um, the weighted uh, loss function of all of the user, okay? So this is the average, the weighted average loss of all of the user. Okay, so that's just um, system model. Okay, so in this slide, I'm gonna present to you um, our first proposed federated learning algorithm, what we call it federal, um, well, it's just, it's just a abbreviation of federated learning, so we just call it federal. Um, so in federal, um, most of the state uh, uh, follow the standard procedure of federated learning, such as uh, local computation, where each client is gonna compute the local model, um, and then um, they're gonna transmit the local model to the uh, parameter server, and the parameter server is gonna update the global model by taking the average of all of the local model. But there is some difference um, between our proposed data compared to uh, the uh, vanilla pet average. Okay, so here um, I would like to note that um, the first difference is the um, the local function is here, um, where we modified it to to be a surrogate function that uh, that includes two components. The first component is the local um, loss function of user n plus um, another function, I mean, it's just, just a linear function um, that take into account uh, both parameter, that is uh, W in, in the previous uh, iteration uh, and the, uh, the gradient of the global loss function um, in the previous uh, 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 global iteration as well. All right, here I use T here. Uh, as the time index for the global iteration. It means um, the um, communication exchange between the client and the uh, parameter server. All right. So the key difference is that, um, well, compared to that average, we have um, uh, here. In that average, this step, gonna be um, WN T right equals to WN uh, let's say um, TK WN T and K minus one uh, minus for some alpha in the gradient of um, the local loss function J N uh, W N T of K minus one. Okay, so um, you can see here, um, this is a key difference, right? For Fed average is to use the same local loss function, uh, but at federal algorithm, we modify um, the local loss function um, by um, uh, adding with the surrogate term uh, H uh, with other component. And, and in Fed average, this is gonna be run for a uh, case step. Right. So K is the total, uh, K from one to two, two K. Okay. So this K is called local step uh, to run the local model. So that's the first um, uh, the, the, the first point of the difference between federal and Fed average. And the second difference is that in, in Fed average, we don't have um, uh, this uh, aggregation at uh, the uh, 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 parameter server. Okay, so that average is much, I mean, it is simpler. Um, it less um, parameter to update. On the other hand, 
um, pedal. Um, it uh, needs to, uh, for, from the client uh, point of view, not only for the local model, it also needs to calculate the local grade uh, From the server point of view, not only it aggregates the um, global model, but it also aggregates uh, the um, grade of um, the local cost function as well. Uh, but um, I mean, um, the, the gradient that the, the client has to, to transmit to parameter server, it has it has the same dimension as um, the weight parameter. So it means that um, it just consumes double the bandwidth to transmit uh, to two parameter compared to weight average. And um, in terms of the server, it just spends double um, computation um, uh, um, uh, complexity to 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 update not only the uh, uh, global model, but also the, uh, the, the global um, gradient, of course. Okay. So um, you may wonder, well, uh, looks like federal is, is more complicated, right? Uh, it, it needs to compute more, uh, it needs to transmit more. What's the benefit? Well, um, the benefit is it's gonna have a better convergence rates, okay? So, um, uh, the theory um, we, you can find you can find in this paper where we show the theory and prove that um, better and converge with the light of uh, the, the linear rate to the optimal global model, and um, by using um, experimental result um, that is that was shown in the paper. We can see here um, the federal algorithm. Uh, converge uh, much faster than the uh, vanilla the average in various settings, uh, in various population of hybrid parameter um, on the um, uh, data set families. Well, um, here I just give you um, one sample of, uh, of, of um, experimental result for a specific data set. Um, if you go to the paper or if you uh, go to the, uh, the GitHub page, um, of this project, and you can see other uh, scenario as well. And um, not only the active, uh, I mean the real data set, we also um, implement federal and compare with that average on synthetic data set. And um, most of the results shows that uh, federal uh, can outperform that average as well. All right. Um, so the first part of federal is um, uh, proposing a new federated learning um, with the faster convergence rate than uh, uh, that average. So the second part of uh, uh, the, the, the project is um, how we can employ um, a federal algorithm. It could be any other federated algorithm over the wireless network. Okay. So um, the communication model we consider in this case um, is a uh, time division uh, multiple access, uh, say for example, TDMA. Um, uh, and then um, we consider the energy consumption of each um, client due to the communication uh, uh, according to, to the formula. Um, and then um, we come up with uh, a problem formulation is an optimization. So we also abuse the name federal for this optimization problem, which is the same as the algorithm we proposed in the first part. Um, as you can see here, so the objective of this optimization uh, contains two parts. The first part is the energy consumption of the client. And uh, the second part is the, the total learning time of the federated learning. So this is uh, the, 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 the cost from the point of view of the user participation, right? So the user is going to participate in federated learning. So it has to spend its um, energy for communication, for computation. So we want to minimize that um, energy. On the other hand, we also want to minimize the, the learning time of the, the whole federated learning process. And the learning time um, include uh, communication time and conversation time, okay? 
So um, we integrate all of the pattern into this um, uh, uh, general optimization problem. And then by exploiting a textual structure of the original optimization, we can decompose a uh, problem into two subproblem. And interestingly, it also um, corresponds to um, three separate resource allocation, which is quite standard in um, uh, wireless communication. Right? That is CPU side control, optimal power control. And so the last one is not standard in, in, in uh, wireless network resource allocation because the last the last problem related to the local accuracy control, which is the specific properties of federated learning. Okay. And um, um, in um, well, in 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 the paper um, uh, here uh, in, in in Infocom 2019, we uh, also provide the code form solution for each of the problem as well. Well, um, it's just based on the KKC condition analysis. Um, but here, I want to show you that the um, simulation result to demonstrate the Pareto optimal point um, for different parameter kappa in this case. Uh, let, me let me remind you kappa is the balancing or the control not parameter to um, control the um, factor of emphasizing which objective that you want to, to, to put um, more priority. Whether you put more priority on um, minimize the energy of the client or whether you want to minimize the total learning time of the so, I mean, well, um, you can control by varying the, uh, the knob um, parameter um, kappa. Okay, and then um, this is the, uh, one of the uh, simulation result um, of the parameter optimal point uh, characterizing um, uh, the trade-off between the time and the energy right? when you vary in um, kappa. And you see that um, if you want to reduce the, the time, then um, so if you want to reduce the energy, then obviously the learning time is going to increase. On the other hand, if you want to um, uh, decrease the learning time, then the energy of the U is going to increase. Okay. All right. So um, based on um, the, um, um, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the backbone of um, the optimization of uh, the federal. Uh, the, we, we also have several follow-up work uh, addressing uh, several issues um, of the federal learning of the wireless network, such as um, essential mechanism uh, for using participation uh, uh, for the related learning. Right? Um, and also we also consider um, how we can share multiple a federated learning service in mobile edge network. Um, and then um, there's another work um, collaborated with um, Dr. Tung Bu um, in, um, in the project that how we can um, uh, employ federated learning over selfie mass in my mind, right? This is one of the state of the art um, um, public communications uh, uh, um, system. Um, instead of using TDMA, well, um, what about, uh, is, it, is it possible that we can uh, employ federated learning on the selfie mass model? And also there's another way uh, how to do the crowdsourcing for federated learning, which is also very closely related to uh, incentive mechanism for um, uh, client participation in federated learning. Okay. So actually, um, if we take a look back to this, um, original optimization uh, problem of federal, then you can see there's a lot of expansion. Uh, if, you, if you take a look in different angles then into this problem, then we can have, we can come up with new different ideas. So let me give you an example. Um, so let's say you wanted to um, reduce the uh, transmission time or computation time um, then one way is to reduce the size of, of the model. Huh? 
reduce the size of the model. Okay, then uh, there's a lot of um, idea um, uh, such as um, compress the model, right? compressing the model before transmitting it to the um, parameter server, uh, and then uh, apply the quantization. Okay, so those are um, uh, some of the idea. Another another angle that we can take a look is that, well, um, can we um, combine, so instead of um, dividing the bandwidth, the wireless bandwidth according to time and frequencies, so can we um, use um, coding to combine um, the, the, the communication of all of the user at the same time, but still, um, at, 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 um, I mean, all of the user can use the same bandwidth, but um, the parameter server is still received correctly out of the signal from all of the user. Yeah? So that's a one point of view from the communication uh, uh, side. And from the server side, well, there's the ideas of um, uh, uh, optimal uh, sampling. So I would say optimal uh, client sampling. Okay. So here, um, it's not necessary that um, all of uh, the client, all of end client should transmit the model to uh, the server in each iteration. Well, possibly uh, just a subset of client can be selected by the server and then those, those sort of client can, and can uh, only the selectors can transmit the model. So by uh, selecting a subset of clients, you can save a lot of, um, uh, first is the bandwidth, right? A uh, few clients transmit the, the model over the network and we can see less bandwidth. And uh, also create less congestion over the network. Okay, so um, what I'm trying to say is that if you take a look, as you tackle a different um, uh, uh, angle of the problem, then we can come up with uh, different ideas uh, for federated learning over wireless network. And I also observed that a lot of new paper um, that um, uh, come up with the, those similar ideas. And, um, uh, and due to the huge amount of publication uh, relating to the uh, federated learning over wireless network, um, uh, we can put um, all of the related work in a single uh, page of the, or single, uh, one or two slides. But instead, I refer you to uh, some of the excellent uh, um, survey paper. <clears throat> so um, here, the, the first one, as you can see, maybe some of you know some of the authors here. Um, it's come from KTS as well. And the second one, um, even though it published a couple of years ago, um, but it also contains a lot of, um, um, I just want to summarize a lot, very excellent idea of that federated learning. Uh, in uh, local network. Okay, so um, um, so my talk contained um, three parts, um, corresponding to three uh, different projects, different idea. So um, I just, um, we're just going to, uh, the first part is uh, the federated learning of a wireless network. So I think um, if you have any question for the first part, then this is, uh, I mean, this is a good time. Uh, I also take um, uh, the chance to, to refresh my uh, myself as well. Uh, is there anyone raising hands? Uh, yeah, I think I oh, have yeah, one uh, question from Hao Chen. Um, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, I think it's a good, good, good talk. I'm very, very. Uh, it's a, it's giving me many, many ideas to uh, um, quick question about the uh, discussion about the proposed uh, FADO algorithm. Uh, could you, Professor uh, Chen, could you go to the page 11 if I don't uh, make, make mistake? Okay, uh, page 11. 11. Yeah, exactly. Pierre, uh -huh. you from, you, 
you uh, formulated the optimization problem is a minimize uh, is a uh, minimization of the both the energy consumption and learning time for the constraint the first one the constraint uh, uh, 14 now I think it's a constraint for the uh, communication time right uh, yeah, that's right. why why here it is a sum of the each uh, communication not the maximum from my from my silly understanding that uh, it's a it's a upload is a up, uploading phase the maximum communication is should be decided by the slowest uh, communication time right why here is a sum of uh, total each uh, the total uh, uh, communication time. Uh, okay so um here um we can see the the um a wireless environment where all of the end user uh, share the same uh, bandwidth of uh, uh, the same wireless bandwidth. So um, uh, we can see that the TDMA as well. So it means each uh, user is going to be allocated a fraction of time to use the whole bandwidth to transmit the data uh, during that fraction of time allocated, dedicated to for that user. So, so it's, it's considered like uh, uh, there's there's a, a whole bunch of time, and we uh, chop it into sub chunk of time, and each sub chunk of time can be allocated to uh, one user, and that one user is going to use whole bandwidth to to transmit the data uh, to the um, the server. And um, and your point actually applies to the second constraint, constraint of equation fifteen where um, that's the computation time that it is the maximum. I mean, this, the, the user, the, the slowest user that uh, computes uh, um, with the longest time uh, for, for uh, uh, to, 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 to update the model. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I got your point, thanks. Another quick question yeah. is that now you consider the federal learning over the wireless networks. But uh, it seems that uh, according to this kind of listed constraints, I could not see the uh, limitation from the wireless networks. It seems that the, this kind of uh, algorithm can be also running over wider networks, for example, the, 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 the cable based networks, because uh, according to this, uh, this constraints, I could not see the, the constraints from the wireless media. Could you oh. mention it? Uh, Okay, so um, well, if if you uh, run the um, federated learning on a wireline network, then first, uh, then you see that the constraint fourteen. Then you don't need a constraint fourteen, right? You don't have the limitation in terms of uh, shared wireless environment, and um, so uh, also the energy consumption. Um, also, I mean, the energy model needs to be modified as well if, if you use the wireless network. Um, so um, that's gonna change uh, the, um, the, the structure of the optimization, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, computation constraint is as uh, effect to um, the uh, scenario setting that you change to my line, but uh, yes, again, the, the constraint for change. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So as you can see that in wireless network, um, uh, because of the limit limitation of the bandwidth uh, uh, or the resource of the wireless, uh, there's a bottleneck is that when you increase the number of user mm -hmm. and, and when more user to share the same wireless environment, then um, there's a kind of, we call it contention uh, problem. Um, then, um, then it's somehow related to scheduling algorithm and um, uh, the, the result that each user is gonna have gonna be smaller or some of the user got result and some may uh, mm -hmm. staff is the resource. So that all kind of problem that happens in wireless network. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last question. Uh, sorry, last question. Okay. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, could you go be, go back to the page eight? This is one framework for the 
proposed algorithm. Uh, okay. In this kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah this, this page. In this slide, you show that uh, you will transfer first the gradient and the parameter information. I don't know what's the main purpose for trying first uh, post, uh, post parameters because first I think from some theoretical aspects, from some theoretical experts, they said that first, uh, first information, including the parameter, well, weight parameter and the gradient, gradient information should transfer, should share the same information. Why do you still need a first of them? And also if you transfer a first uh, weight parameter and the gradients, you are cost more. For example, you are double, uh, you will double the uh, energy consumption. You, you because you want to change double parameters information, right? Yeah, that's true. So yeah, um, so your um, well, your point is also the key idea of uh, Pedro, um, because here um, I want to emphasize again that um, we uh, we need the information of the gradient um, of the local lot function. Uh, to be transmitted to the server, right? And then mm -hmm. server is gonna aggregate it and transmit it back to the um, each client. And this uh, information is gonna be used by each client for the server gate local loss function and uh here. -huh. Yeah. And well, why we do that? Well, if um, it's hard to say in this slide, but um, typically in the paper you can see that. Um, uh, with special structures of this surrogate function. So it helped uh, to accelerate the convergence of yeah. the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, 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 so well, that's the purpose. But, uh, so we, but uh, this kind of uh, convergence, uh, I mean, this kind of uh, uh, speed up, this kind of speed, uh, speeding up in convergence is based on the sacrificing the energy consumption or the uh, communication resources, right? That's true, that's true. But, uh, the so, next, but uh, in the next, next slide, in page, uh, in slide 11, you said that our, our task is to minimize the, uh, the energy consumption and the, the processing time. It seems that there is some contradict, right? Uh, okay, so here, um, this uh, uh, optimization problem yeah. is a resource allocation problem for any type of federated learning algorithm that you're going to apply for wireless mm -hmm. network. Okay, so it means that you can use that average as well, uh, because the objective now is minimize the energy, right, and, and the total time communication. And if you take a look at this optimization, it's independent of the algorithm. So here you can see that there's no such type of algorithm is required for, 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 for this optimization, right? So mm -hmm. here, this is just a general result allocation for federated learning uh, over uh, communication. So for different type of um, algorithm, gonna give us different type of uh, number of a, a global iteration to converge. Okay, so this parameter k theta is used to denote for the number of global communication or number of global iteration mm -hmm. until converge. So, well, if you use Fed average, then the value of k theta of Fed average mm -hmm. is gonna be different. From you use uh, federal, then you have uh, k theta of federal gonna be different, right? Yeah. So it means it's you can use whatever type of Federated mm. learning algorithm. As long as um, uh, you put the k theta for each other, mm. yeah. But, but uh, on the maybe yeah yeah okay. yeah, uh, yeah you, you maybe you can continue offline yeah for the further question yeah yeah thanks um, yeah okay so okay. Uh, yeah, ask uh, are... if there is any one more question from the other participants if there is any uh, otherwise yeah. we yeah. We can continue with the rest of the talk. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, so I leave some of the question uh, at the end of the talk. Um, all right. Um, okay, so let's uh, move on to the second part of my talk, which is about 
uh, to projects of uh, personalized federated learning, um, uh, where we had a publication uh, two years ago. Um, mm -hmm. So again, um, I would like to emphasize the contribution of my student, Gangdam, and Josh when he was an intern um, at that time. Okay, so um, before uh, I give you motivation for personalized federated learning, let me give you a one of my favorite use cases of federated learning, that is use case in healthcare. Okay, so here, so let me give you an example of, there's some rare disease, okay, there's some, some, some rare disease such that, well, in one hospital, it may only have a few samples of the patient, okay, because it's a rare disease, right? So, so you mean that not many people such, have such have that disease. Uh, so it means, well, it means that the, that hospital, I mean, a single hospital, does not have enough data. So if you want to uh, employ machine learning for the prediction or whatever, um, let's say on medical imaging, um, uh, uh, BASC, uh, then well, you don't have enough data. So what are you gonna do? Then federated learning is one of a good approach in this case. And um, uh, well, this morning I just uh, searched uh, for some results and just found out, well, um, uh, there's a project by uh, Casco and Matryoshka uh, that were presented by, they presented in the Flower Summit in this year, which is quite a very recent result. Well, what is a flower? So, well, I, I will explain to you as I mean flower later, but basically flower is kind of a unifying um, simulation framework for federated learning where, um, uh, you can go there, fork them, and you can uh, uh, run any type of benchmark um, federated learning algorithm to compare them in a consistent, consistent manner, okay? Um, so, uh, okay, going back to this project, um, in this project, these two uh, authors um, in their, uh, what, what they call VDNO project, they uh, consider the idea of, well, uh, exploiting multiple um, uh, hospital uh, collaboration to learn a global model, okay? Um, interesting fact is that they simulate five Swedish region with different amounts of data, okay? And, and some of the region, uh, they also give me this slide here. Uh, these two slides I, I, I just uh, uh, captured from this YouTube video. So if um, you are interested in it, you can watch it later. Um, so here, I'm not sure that you know um, about this region in Sweden, but um, the way they do is that um, they're gonna um, uh, simulate the data for each uh, hospital. Let's say the local data is this hospital is 5,000 in the local data, this hospital is 3.5. And they say they say that the biggest advantage of using federated learning can be observed for client with smaller amount of data. So exactly in this case, where um, the, the, each uh, local hospital just has a few samples of data. The thing is the algorithm they use for their uh, experiment is uh, fed average the um, vanilla algorithm, and it worked very well. And they say, it's a probably due to the fact that um, their data does not show a strong non ideas Okay, so, well, it's kind of, well, maybe they have the data IID and then they shuffle it and they're gonna distribute it to each local hospital and, 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 and to, to perform the simulation, I'm not sure how the project was that um, they claim that maybe because the data does not show a strong IRD. So flat average can work very well in this case, okay? But I would like to give you um, another scenario, which is, I think is more practical, okay? Again, um, with some rare disease, one hospital may only have a few samples. So let's say one hospital in Stockholm, right? They, um, it, it, 
has a few sample of patients, maybe two, three, four, five patients um, with that disease. Another hospital in Tokyo um, uh, have, or let's say 10 or 20 or maybe 100 um, of the, uh, the patient with that disease in again, another hospital in Sao Paulo. Okay, so um, the thing is each of the hospital uh, they have the database uh, uh, of the patient. And usually um, the database of that patient also have some common field like uh, the height, the lifespan, the rate, and the blood time. But if you um, take a look carefully, you can see that uh, the height of those patients in Stockholm maybe range, right, let's say the average range may be uh, 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 one point uh, let's say 75 to 1.9. On the other hand, um, if you take a look at the local database in Tokyo, maybe the high is going to be different, right? The distribution, the height of the, the data of the patient in the hospital of Tokyo, maybe just very in the range, maybe lower, maybe 1.6 to uh, let's say 1.8. Okay. Similarly, the lifespan of um, the, the average lifespan of the patient in Stockholm um, may be different from the average lifespan um, uh, of the patient in Tokyo. Okay, so um, I just illustrate to you is that um, the more practical scenario is uh, the data at different hospitals gonna be non-IIT. So that's the key word, right? non-IIT. Okay, so uh, I already give you an example where the distribution of um, the data of different patient in different location are gonna be different, okay? So it provides the motivation for the idea of personalized uh, federated learning, uh, which come from the key challenge of statistical diversity where the data distribution among kind of IIT. So because of that, the single, global model that is learned by, let's say, fit average is not, I mean, is hardly well generalized to each client data, right? So it means it's, it's like, well, you have three kids, so each of them like a different flavor of ice cream. And then your task is going to buy um, Let's say you, your budget is the only one, uh, 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 only can buy one flavor of ice cream. And how can you buy one flavor of ice cream that can satisfy um, the, uh, the, the, the demand of all of the three kids? Okay, considering that they, they each of them have different um, uh, personal uh, taste of uh, uh, ice cream flavor. Okay, so the, this motivates for us our research questions. How can we leverage the global model? Again, local global model is also very important in federated learning because that is the center point of the idea of collaborating uh, with, uh, among uh, a bunch of devices. And then we need to um, how we need to leverage the global model so that we can find a personalized model. Um, that is stylized for, for each client data. Okay, so that's a motivational question. Um, based on that, um, we um, comes up with a new problem formulation. So to show you um, what the key difference between new problem formulation. So let me remind you the conventional federated learning problem here. Uh, well, um, Fi here, F sub i here is the, um, the local loss function of the client i, suppose you have n client, okay? So uh, in conventional federated learning, you want to minimize the global loss problem by finding a global model, right? Okay, so instead of using the same um, uh, local loss function, well, we modify um, the local loss function by adding the second term here, okay, adding the second term. So 
um, we introduce a new parameter, that's a personalized model we call theta i. Theta i is the personalized model of the client i. And the second term plays the role of parameterization to say that, well, the personalized model of, of, of the client i is should be not far away from the global order too much. And um, how much is far away that we control? Well, we control by the parameter lambda, which is how the parameter. Okay. All right. So um, as you can see, if um, you, well, if you vary lambda, it control how much um, your uh, personalized model theta i when we close to flow model. And then you get two extreme cases where lambda go to infinity, then um, we uh, have the case of what? When lambda goes to infinity, we have the case of the conventional federated learning, right? Because when lambda goes to infinity, it force the term here that all of the personalized model must be the same as uh, W. So we go back to the conventional federated learning. On the other hand, the, the second extreme case is when lambda uh, go to zero. And when lambda go to zero, it means that uh, we don't have the second term here. Um, so um, it means that a, each of the client gonna learn the model by themselves on their local data. There is no collaboration at all, so, so that there is no federated learning by TensorFlow. Okay. So uh, to show you um, the control, not lambda control the very uh, varying degree of um, how close the personal model that I have to the global model. Okay, so based on that, we uh, formulate a bi-level optimization problem we call a PFEDME, uh, which is abbreviated for uh, the personalized federated learning with Morial effort. So let me explain to you why is that. So because this has two level, right? The inner level at the inner level is this level, is that suppose each client is a given the global model, which could be transferred, which could transfer back from uh, uh, parameter server, then the client gonna try to find a function, but well, they, they gotta they're gonna minimize this one with respect to to find the optimal personalized model and they obtain the value. And that value we call it F capital F sub I of W, because it's a function of W, right? We get different, with different value of W, the global model, then we can have different um, uh, loss function uh, that's optimized by each client with respect to the model. Okay. That is the inner layer. And then we use these uh, special functions uh, for the outer layer. And then we're gonna perform um, let's say conventional federated learning at the outer layer here, okay? So you can see that now you can use federated learning. Uh, uh, the only difference is now, instead of the traditional local model, we replace this by special function F here, which is defined here. And in optimization literature, this optimization, uh, this function uh, definition is called a uh, uh, Morial envelope. Okay, it's a Morial envelope. This is the Morial envelope of this function f. Okay, so that's why we name it personalized federated learning with Morial envelope. Okay, so let me explain to you. So, George, uh, the motivation in, of, of our idea, uh, the PFIT idea, um, by uh, geometry. So, um, well, you can imagine that, well, um, Let's say W is a, a, a central point. W is some central point. This is some point where, um, let's say, all of the client agree to meet each other. Okay. And, and, and let me um, uh, denote, so let's say, this is the point where um, the client one, the data of client one, right, may be generated by some distribution one and then we can have uh, another point where uh, the data 
of kind two generated by uh, distribution uh, uh, two, and then we have uh, uh, P3. So let's say uh, we have three clients. All right. Then, um, well, the idea of um, personalized federated learning is that, well, uh, given the point W here, the central point where every client agreed to meet, uh, every each of the client, they gotta uh, try to find um, the personalized model such that, okay, such that, um, the vector theta, let's say theta one minus W, we're gonna to point to the um, direction that well aligned with the distribution that generated into one, okay? So similarly, um, this guy uh, also tried to, uh, so the purpose is finding theta two, such that the direction is, the different the direction of theta two uh, minus um, W, we're going to point to the um, the point of uh, the distribution that generates um, the, the, the data for kind two, and similarly for the kind three as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then um, all of these kind uh, might, well, if we control lambda and we then guarantee that all of the distance. Um, uh, we're going to be uh, doubted in, in, in the board. So I will show later a theoretical example. Okay, so, uh, well, so in um, optimization literature, um, this uh, uh, optimal personalized model by applying argument uh, operator to this term, uh, we, there's a proximal term. Um, so in this approach, in P-Technique, we need to um, uh, obtain uh, this personalized model. Uh, but we don't have to um, optimally obtain it. Uh, we can um, approximately obtain it. Maybe you can run, um, well, we can. The, the, the first benefit of this approach is that it's agnostic to the inner optimizer. It means that you can use gradient machine or you can use uh, nested acceleration, whatever, um, optimization solver to, to solve this problem. This is the first order method, okay? And no Hessian matrix required. Okay, um, so these are also other personalization data um, that even happen in the same year as well. I think if the year of uh, 2020 is the years of um, um, some of the data that are pasting into personalization for federated learning. And then let me illustrate to you, um, uh, okay, this animation you, uh, illustrates to you the, the process of um, PFETME. Uh, first, uh, we also have some standard procedure like traditional machine learning where a server send global model to uh, old client here, WT, T client, T client, T client. And then um, each client gonna solve for the personalized model, okay? So um, if you remember, each client gonna solve this optimization problem. Again, um, uh, it's very easy to solve your optimization. Okay. So it's actually using gradient descent. Um, okay. And then after that, each client gonna update this local model here. Okay, then here, it, the, the key idea for this local model is, well, uh, this term actually is just the gradient of the uh, capital F, uh, um, F uh, R, R2, okay? Then you see um, this equation actually just the kind of fit average uh, when you do the federated learning for um, the outer level. Right. If you remember, so let me remind you, the outer level is to minimize um, sum of capital FIW, okay? And capital FI is what? That is a Muriel envelope of the um, original uh, loss function, right? Of this kind. Okay. 
Okay, so you see that in order to um, uh, update this equation to follow the principle of Fed average for outer level, we need to buy the um, uh, optimal uh, personalized model. But in this case, uh, in our algorithm, we don't need to buy the optimal one, we can buy the approximate one. And it's also work, um, work very well. Okay, and then um, the rest of the process is the same as federated learning. Uh, I mean, uh, traditional federated learning, which is uh, sent to the server, and the server is going to uh, uh, aggregate in our local model uh, to um, produce the local model, it's a it's a T, and send back to each of client, and each of client want to emulate the personalized model uh, again. Okay, so theoretically, we proved uh, uh, the convergence of p um with um, the global model going to convert to the optimal global model, W star. Um, and then we also show that um, all of the personalized model of a client going to be bounded um, in a, a ball um, revolving around the center point of uh, W star. Okay, so um, yeah, so this 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 kind of you can consider as it's like this term is like um, um, average um, distance uh, of uh, personalized model to the uh, global model, and uh, this is valid by this term. Okay. Okay, so um, we perform. Um, extensive uh, experiments with different type of data sets um, with different, uh, with two uh, convex and non convex model. Why we do that? Because in theory, we also prove the convergence of the convex uh, large function and non convex large function, but smooth, uh, non convex but smooth large function, each one. And these are some other federated settings. And uh, we compare with um, one of the state of the art. Uh, Personalized um, to the learning as well, and uh, from the level of So uh, the result shows that, well, uh, with personalized um, model, obviously, well, we, it, it, it performs much better than fit average. Right? Um, um, one thing I would like to, to note is that um, it, in, in, in our GitHub page uh, for the code of this paper, we receive a lot of um, a, a star and uh, the work from the community, um, uh, and we, we're very happy about it because it looks like that the community uh, find that the p me algorithm work efficiently in practice. Right? It's just not only theory paper. Uh, we have to show it well. It converge first or work uh, well in practice. So we also even received some uh, an invitation um, from uh, one professor who also. Um, um, I mean, uh, manage the, the flower framework, right? So if you remember in the slide, when I mentioned the flower, which is a unified approach, a unified uh, simulation, a simulation approach to federated uh, learning analytic and evaluation. Okay? So if, if you want to try to run some federated learning benchmark, I recommend you to go to flower and, and um, use that framework. It's in a sense of very uh, uh, um, efficient for um, uh, the research on, on the server device and, and including the mobile and the cloud as well. Okay. So um, again, we, we got an invitation um, to contribute our piece of me uh, to Flower. And then um, hopefully uh, uh, one month later when you go to Flower and you can see me is one of the benchmarks as well. So now I think there's several benchmarks, like less around five benchmarks of different types of federated learning on the flower. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, I think that's it for the second um, uh, part of the talk for you about personalized federated learning. Uh, and then um, it's a good time uh, to have uh, um, a, a short break and to, to take any questions.
Is, is there anyone raising hands? Uh, uh, not for now, then maybe we can continue and uh, at the end there might be questions. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So um, the last uh, part is I would like to talk about the robust uh, federalized learning, especially um, the uh, last stand of the federalized learning. And these are uh, my uh, PhD student who contributed to this project. Okay, so again, the, um, the motivation for um, coming up with a new algorithm uh, to robustify federalized learning just come from the key challenge of federalized learning, the statistical heterogeneity, um, which can create um, a, a, a huge problem in terms of poorly generalized to individual user data, as well as unseen distribution to higher. Right? And this is another um, um, uh, issue is that is vulnerable to adversary attack. Okay? So if someone just modify the data a little bit, if you use your eyeball, you cannot see the, any difference with the original data and the modified data or the perturbed data. But that perturbed data gonna gonna be um, gonna affect um, the uh, the model that the, I mean the traditional uh, classification model to make the classification to have a, a wrong. I mean, uh, incorrect classification. Let's say uh, the image is a peak, but the classification by put up the data, even though you can see that where after percent, the image is still a peak, that um, the classification can classify the, that person image as the, the, the airplane, right? So there's a the joke that the peak can fly, which comes from um, this uh, adversary that initial money. Okay. So, um, so uh, in terms of statistical heterogeneity, um, uh, there's several approach. One of the first categories of approach is client adaptive. Uh, so personalized federalizing learning in the second part is this um, one of these. On the other hand, um, here client adaptive means well, it's a kind of uh, um, will adapt with the global model to, 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 to learn their own personalized model. On the other hand, um, another approach is a client uniform approach where um, a single global model is learned, but it's not, it's not simply learned by like that average, but is it judiciously learned such that it's, it's a single model, but still you can deliver uniformly good performance for our training client and for, for, for new and unseen client. Okay, so um, uh, so we propose the basis and robust federated learning. Uh, we call it a uh, workflow. Um, so, um, so we also compare with um, other uh, robust uh, federated learning approach as well. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's in the paper, but uh, Due to time limits, I would like to emphasize uh, some of the key points of the uh, proposed algorithm. We base on um, a vast and distant concept, okay? So vast and distant. To measure the cost of, uh, let's say, moving, um, how to move the dis distribution P to the distribution Q. So let's assume um, this is the pile of sand, okay? Then it's a box of sand, right? So we have this. In Q is another distribution with different pile of sand with the same location. Uh, it could be a different location, but let, let's say uh, the same for easy uh, comparison. Obviously, the uh, these two pipes and they have the same mass, right? Let's say this is distribution, right? So the area um, of, of, of uh, this uh, pipe size equals to one. And then um, the basis and this uh, measure, what is the minimum cost to uh, move the this pipe sand to uh, to form a, a, a new pipe with the same shape as the cube? Okay, and then you can imagine well. 
for each uh, location of the box of sand, let's say this is the first location, right? And you can divide it, you can uh, chop into multiple chunk, small chunk, and then you can distribute each small chunk into different location. Uh, let's say this small chunk to this first location to match with uh, the first location of the, the second part of sand, right? And then uh, for the second location, you can use the second chunk uh, uh, to move it here, okay? And this match with the second one. And then you're gonna combine, well, uh, the, the type location is, it is quite, this box require a lot of sand, right? And um, you can combine this uh, box of sand with location, combine with this location, and then combine with maybe this location. Um, so all of these, uh, I mean, the way that you move all, um, all to move out of the particle from one location to another location such that to form um, a, a new shape of pattern. And how you can find, um, which way that you can find to move uh, all the particles such that the cost is minimum, right? And that is called mass and distance, okay? Mathematically, it's easy to find by this equation. And then using that concept, um, uh, we consider a vast system uh, um, federated learning algorithm where here, uh, this is, at first this looks complicated, okay? So here, um, take a look at so this is, well, this is the last function, okay? This is the last function um, uh, with the data gonna be perturbed uh, by a, the, 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 the perturb data has a distribution that lies inside a ball here. We call it a vast system ball. And this vast system ball got the, um, the center is the combination um, of all of the distribution of the kind. Okay, so this point is the data, uh, empirical data generation of kind one and this is kind two, three, four, okay? And by, you know, in machine learning, uh, sorry, in federated learning, um, the context is, um, it's the sum of all M client weighted by the parameter lambda. In that uh, combination, gonna create a, uh, um, a empirical data generating distribution uh, for, uh, a, federated learning, which is this point, okay? So it means if you vary the, uh, the vector lambda, where sum of our lambda from lambda one to lambda n equals to one and our lambda is only uh, non-negative, then um, you can uh, have different type, I mean, different center of the ball, okay? And that row here is the uh, uh, diameter of the bus system ball. So the key idea of this problem formulation is, uh, well, let's say I let any adversarial guys that can perturb the data as much as possible, as long as the data to be perturbed lies inside a vice system wall here, okay? Then I'm gonna train the model to find a, a weight model theta to, to minimize the, um, the guy that create the most damage to my uh, uh, um, uh, loss uh, function, right? So this is, this is the worst case because supremum here, it means I'm gonna find who is the most adversary guy, right? To create the most damage to the loss function. And I'm gonna against him, against the, the worst guys, okay? I'm gonna find, uh, the model against the worst case. So that, that worst case risk of the unknown choosers um, is the, the key idea for the, uh, the robustness, right? Because once you against the worst guys, you don't care, you don't, you don't, you, you, you will not be scared of any other guy, right? Because you guarantee that, well, your performance um, already there with a the worst guy, uh, then it cannot be worse than any other guy. That's also a key idea. 
Okay, and then, um, well, um, uh, uh, my to do a formulation and um, we can, um, uh, we take the advantage of um, um, uh, strongly convex uh, in this case by choosing a right parameter then we can um, do the um, uh, federated learning uh, as usual. Uh, the only difference is the, again, the local loss function should be modified uh, um, according to the dual formulation. All right, and then we can also, also obtain the uh, physical performance in terms of robust generalization now. Okay, um, and also we have the application by choosing Remember, if we choose different type of lambda, then the vast symbol is also different, right? And uh, it also has an application of multi-source domain adaptation. Because let's say when you train the model, that can uh, it could be guaranteed to be um, uh, be behave well against all type distribution around, uh, inside the board, right? Let's suppose you have a new client with the distribution Q here. Then, well, what you're going to do is you're going to find lambda uh, prime such that it's kind of you move um, the center of the ball that close to um, the, 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 dis the new distribution Q as much as possible, such that the diameter, or, I mean, the, the radius is the smallest. And then you can cover this distribution. Then um, when you train it, your model is going to be guaranteed to, to perform well on Q as well. So that's the idea. Multi-source domain adaptation. Okay, so um, so uh, I would like to compare this idea of robustness with personalization. If you remember that for personalization, you also have a, a key model here, right? And then you got uh, theta one minus uh, 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 w, you have theta two minus w, and you have uh, theta t three, sorry, minus w, and you have theta four minus w. Okay, and then the difference is that for personalized model, after learning that you got, um, well, you got a model that adapted it, uh, one model, uh, sorry, one model adapt to the kind one. Uh, second model adapts to kind two, third and fourth model adapts to four and, and, and three and four, right? But on the other hand, a waffle, once you train it, it's going to be robust to any types of distribution of data that lies inside the vast sustainable. Okay? It's not only limited to um, just some of uh, the data um, of the um, client. But it's also any type of adversarial data as well. Okay, that's the key idea. Okay, so um, uh, this is some um, experimental result. Um, you can uh, take a look on the GitHub page of the paper. So in summary, so today in the talk, I give you the three key ideas. Um, I mean, sorry, a three key uh, research project of our group. First one, the federated learning over wireless network, even though we also have a lot of follow-up work. Uh, the personalized federated learning in robust, uh, vast and robust federated learning. We also have some other work in different direction as well as uh, accelerating federated learning by using some optimization technique to uh, speed up uh, the um, learning process or some idea about democratized learning, somehow they connect to continue uh, a lifelong learning or continual learning, uh, which is what's what's uh, have, have, have been done by uh, Dr. Munye as well. And then the future, we think about how we can apply uh, federated learning for representation learning or for the dynamic system as well. Okay, so thank you. Um, if you want to take any results, though, um, is all is every almost everything is there on the website. So feel free to check it if you're interested in it and and. I'm uh, happy to take uh, any questions from now.